Alright folks, for those of you who weren't around uh, when we learned how to draw a grapevine, this might help. To draw a grapevine, the best thing to do is to use a pencil, um, and you should try and make the grapevine look as realistic as possible. That includes not quite drawing it straight. So as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm showing the shoots of the grapevine along one of the cordon or arms. Now the shoots generally sort of go in a straight up direction. You don't have to be terribly precise with them. Just make them look re reasonably realistic. Don't just use straight lines with a ruler or something like that because that looks like a rake. That doesn't look like a grapevine. So your grapevine is going to end up sort of looking a bit like this. And you want to use solid lines when you're drawing the grapevine. You don't want to take your pencil off the page and do sketchy marks. You want nice solid lines as you draw it. It doesn't have to be a pure surprise winning piece of artwork. What you basically have to do is show the structure of the grapevine as best you can. So the other cordon will come back down here and then we've got our trunk leading down to the root system at the base. Now it comes the time to label the parts of the vine. It's very important to understand these parts and to actually know the names of them because when you're working out in the paddock with me I will expect you to know these. The top section of the trunk that comes in this area here is sort of like the top of your head and so we call this the crown. The two arms of the grapevine that branch out from the trunk, this is the trunk, The two arms that branch out from the trunk, one on either side, are called the cordon. Now some pruning systems will have up to four cordon. We have the most common for Australia which is the vertical shoot positioned or VSP type uh, arrangement where we have two cordon, one on each side. Obviously from the cordon come the shoots from this year that carry the fruit and so we'll label them as such. They are the shoots. Down the bottom here it's no great mystery. We have the roots and there will be as many roots in the ground as there are shoots in the air. Uh, so the, the grapevine is basically a mirror image of itself under the ground. Uh, only of course not trained like we do up here. Now in one section of your diagram you will need to do an exploded drawing of um, a node. So what we'll do is over here we'll start to draw out what a, a lumpy bit along one of these shoots looks like. So each of these would be a node and on this side we'll have a tendril. A tendril is like the grappling hook of a grapevine. It's actually stronger by weight than steel. Uh, they don't weigh very much so that's not hard to achieve. On this side we will have a petiole which is a leaf stem that goes out to support a leaf and then we'll have just above that the bud. Now the bud carries up to two to three shoots for, of next year's growth and it ripens as the node matures during the growth of the shoot. On the end of the petiole we have our leaf so we'll just loosely draw that like that. This whole section here is found in one of these segments along every single cane of the vine and we call this the node. In the node, as I've just told you, there is the tendril, there is the bud, and there is the petiole. If you can name those parts of the grapevine, you will pass this part of the assessment and when you're talking to people in the paddock and they use this terminology which is commonly used within the workplace, you won't seem like you don't know anything. At least you'll be able to talk with people about what's happening. Alright, you need to do one of these diagrams in pencil using solid lines, making it look as realistic as possible uh, and that is your first homework assignment for viticulture.